Hello everyone, uh, my name is Philip. I'm a blockchain and technical consultant uh, here in Revuto. And today I will be talking a little bit more about Cardano staking parameters. Um, in one of our previous tech talks, uh, we described uh, the basics of Cardano staking. So we're gonna first go very shortly over that and then we're gonna go in a little bit more depth than we did previously. So, as we said, Cardano has a delegated proof of stake, uh, which means that the delegators uh, delegate their ADA to the, to the validators. Uh, the validators are called SPOs or stake pool operators. Important thing to realize is that uh, the delegator's ADA does not leave the delegator's wallet. It is just delegated via a, a private key uh, to the SPOs. Uh, in a general sense, the more ADA SPOs have, it increases the chance of them minting a new block. We will go in a bit more detail uh, about this specific um, functionality a bit later on. Okay, so we have that. We have stake pool operators that run the nodes, that validate the blocks, that put transactions in the blocks and add them on the blockchain. And we have delegators, which are uh, average users who are just ADA holders who delegate their power, uh, their staking power to, to SPOs. Okay, so in this uh, delegated proof of stake protocol, what do we need to ensure, right? As in any blockchain, we need to ensure security. We need to ensure that uh, the blockchain cannot be corrupted, at least not easily. Uh, it cannot be attacked by different, you know, vectors. Um, so this is basically what the consensus layer uh, achieves, what the Ouroboros protocol ensures, right? So this is a part of the software that ensures, and it's actually formally verified, that is safe and secure. Okay. Uh, the next thing, we need to ensure randomness and fairness because Proof of stake uh, consensus uh, protocols have an inherent uh, randomness, right? There is something in, in Ouroboros that is called a VRF, verifiable random function, uh, that basically assigns blocks in advance to the stake pool operators. Uh, this is a cryptographic uh, function uh, and uh, each stake pool operator can basically query that function and ask, hey, uh, how many blocks am I assigned in the following epoch, in the following five days, and at what time? And the stake pool operator will get an answer for his or hers node specifically. It is not possible to query the VRF for other nodes. So this information is private, and it also, uh, the reason for this is because if someone, if, if say an attacker knows in advance that you will be minting a block at a certain time, you are vulnerable to let's say a DDoS attack or some sort of a, of a network attack. So we have randomness, but it's not really completely random. It's a weighted randomness, because we said earlier that the more, the more stake you have as a stake pool operator, the higher your chances are to mint a block, right? The higher your chances are that the VRF will assign a block to you. Okay, cool, but that, that means that if somehow I accrue a huge amount of stake, let's say 300 million, 500 million, two, three, five, ten 10 billion ADA, I can take over the block production basically by myself, which is not good. So that's where we get to decentralization. We want the network to be sufficiently decentralized. Okay, so there is a limit on when it is not, mo not feasible anymore to gather more stake into a single pool. Right now that limit is uh, 64 million ADA. So basically if you as a stake pool operator have gathered 60, 64 million ADA of stake, uh, any more ADA that you collect into that pool basically diminishes your return. It decreases the rewards that you get 
for each produced block. So the idea is let's have a certain amount of stake pools that are fully saturated, uh, but not oversaturated. And we calculate that number as a division of 32 billion ADA that is in circulation now, divided by 64 million ADA currently, which gets us to a number of 500, which is this K parameter. So K is currently now set to 500. Uh, it basically means in, in an ideal circumstance, we would have 500 fully saturated pools that are producing blocks. Currently on the network, we have more than 3,000 stake pools. Of course, not all are saturated, not all are producing blocks. So there, is, there are now debates about the K parameter in the community. Okay, we have to ensure also quickness. What does quickness mean? Uh, the quickness means ideally you would like to have decentralization basically going to infinity. You would like to have a million nodes, five, 10 million nodes. The problem is the more that network grows, it is more difficult and time consuming to propagate the new state throughout the network. So let's say you create a new block, but then you have to propagate that block throughout the whole world within five seconds. It is not feasible to propagate that information to every single node in the world if there are 10 million nodes. That's why we have this parameter that is kind of a trade-off. Like we have 500, we think it's sufficient, at least in these circumstances. And with this parameter, we can achieve quickness, we can achieve randomness, fairness, and um, we can achieve financial incentives, right? Every time you mint a new block, you get a reward for minting the block and all the delegators get a reward from their, from their SPO. Cool, so that's, that's parameter K. Now we have another parameter called A0. Uh, A0 is a parameter that describes the influence of pledge to the amount of rewards given to a, to a stake pool operator. So what is pledge? Um, pledge is also highly discussed in the community, but let's say pledge is the amount that a stake pool operator as an individual or a group or an entity is willing to dedicate himself to his own pool. The idea behind the pledge is to incentivize the stake pool operator to have high pledge to ensure security of the network. Um, there are a lot of discussions on how this actually works in practice. A lot of stake pool del delegators, uh, operators, I'm sorry, uh, decide to have relatively low pledge uh, and take that ADA and put it into the stake pool as a normal delegator would because there is probably not too much difference between those two things. Um, okay, so we have, I have this written down, CIP50. Uh, CIP50 is a Cardano improvement proposal, number 50, created by Dr. Michael Liesenfeld who deeply analyzed the work of IOG, uh, analyzed the, uh, the distribution of, of stake, uh, distribution of stake pool operators, comparing multi-pool operators because no one, no one can prevent you from opening several pools if you can attract more, uh, more delegation. Uh, and after all, all of the analysis, he proposes has proposed a new system of distributing rewards to, to stake. Uh, it's a bit maybe too complicated for this talk, but if you are interested, you can, you can find it very, very easily. Um, in short, what Dr. Lissenfeld's uh, research found is that K effective, K effective means what K is in reality, it's around 40. Right, which is not good because K setup was 500 and you know, we, would, we would kind of want to be close to that 500. And uh, he also noticed what, what I you know, uh, suggested before that the A0, the pledge influence is not as large as maybe it was expected. 
so he created a new equation that would uh, simultaneously help the smaller pools who are not fully saturated and have a dynamic pledge setting that the more, uh, the more stake you uh, attract, the higher your pledge should be to have the optimal rewards. So it's an interesting CIP, it's, it is under review, it is under discussion, we don't know if it will be implemented and if it will be, then when. So that's a little bit deeper on Cardano staking and Cardano staking parameters. Thank you very much for listening and I'll see you in one of the following talks.